Okay, welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, it is wonderful to be with you all to welcome you to PLU and to share some information about our global education offerings. So uh, before we begin, I'll start off with some introductions. Uh, my name is Megan Grover. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve as the Associate Director of Study UA and Semester Program Manager for the Wong Center for Global and Community Engaged Education at Pacific Lutheran University. And here with me today, I have faculty leader, Dr. Behrens, um, and students who have participated in Study Away. And so you'll be hearing from them later in the presentation um, to share more about their personal experiences with global education. Um, but I'll just begin uh, by welcoming you all and thank you for your interest in learning about different global engagement opportunities with PLU. So to begin, um, we just want to share with you the Wong Center's vision and mission for global education. Uh, PLU is a very globally focused university dedicated to developing students with a global mindset uh, to educate students for lives where they can serve and lead our world uh, to bring more peace, justice, health, and sustainability. And so by offering a range of different opportunities, experiences, and programs, our students are able to engage thoughtfully with the world, uh, develop their own learning, and also contribute to peace building. Um, so I just wanted to offer that at the start to uh, let everyone know what our mission and vision is. And so to start off, we want to celebrate some of our achievements in this regard. PLU is uh, recognized as a regional institution who really excels at this work. Uh, we are a leader um, for our global education efforts, and we've listed some of our achievements here. Um, what's most notable, I suppose, is that we regularly rank in the top 20 nationally. Uh, for institutions of our size, for the number of graduates who engage in study away experiences. Um, also, PLU is well known for producing graduates who go on to serve in the Peace Corps. Um, and finally, we were recognized by the Forum on Education Abroad for an institution who meets the standards of good practice and who provides quality and rigorous experiences for our students when they engage in off-campus learning. So we're really pleased um, with these achievements and are happy to share those with you all. Um, but I wanna begin now speaking with you about some of the benefits of global education and why it's important for students to think about in incorporating study away as part of their academic plans. Um, so thinking, uh, beyond graduation, um, and as students begin to think about uh, their meaning and purpose, their vocation um, and place in society, we know that employers are seeking out graduates who have had some kind of global engagement experience um, because students who study abroad during their college years are known to be um, leaders in a global context. They uh, showcase different skill sets here for independence, flexibility, cross-cultural communication, language proficiency, and more. Um, so really the benefits here are um, really high, and we know that stu students who participate in global programs really bring a lot to the workplace. Um, so we hope that by sharing with you these benefits that this will um, encourage and inspire you to think of different ways to engage with um, study away and other kinds of global programs. The Wong Center offers different programming on campus. So while we're known for sending students um, all across the globe, we also offer programming on campus to showcase and highlight um, our global connections and relationships, bringing speakers onto campus, 
um, to talk about interdisciplinary and cross-cultural topics. Um, our most recent symposium, which is a multi-day conference, was on the topic of healing, um, which we felt was very timely given the global pandemic we've all been experiencing these past years, um, to speak about healing and pathways for restoration and renewal in a very global sense. Um, and so this was the Wong Center's effort to bring global speakers, global topics, global issues uh, to our campus community for students and the community to engage with here at home. But I know that most of you are probably interested in hearing about our international or other off-campus study away programs and experiences. So I do want to share those with you. Um, at PLU, we offer a wide range of different opportunities for students to meet different academic interests. So we have a range of programs that offer different durations, whether it's a short term um, experience or a longer uh, term program as a semester. Uh, we offer a variety of different destinations and programs with all different kinds of academic themes and uh, experiential learning um, opportunities. So I just want to highlight a few of those. Uh, PLU is well known for our January term, our J-term model, which is a one-month short-term study away opportunity in the month of January, where students have the opportunity to engage in travel and learning on the road. Um, and every year in January, we offer a range of different programs. So Dr. Behrens, who you'll be hearing from in a little bit, has offered um, short-term study away courses in the Bahamas to study tropical uh, biology, uh, marine biology. Um, we've had other experiences that our student Emily will be speaking about later in the presentation um, to do international honors coursework in Oxford. Um, we've also had language immersion programs in locations such as Germany or Uruguay. Um, so there's a, a wide range of offerings there for our students who, for them, a short-term experience is a good fit. Otherwise, uh, we do offer semester programming where a student can study away for either a fall semester or a spring semester and take courses that are relevant to their degree plans and also incorporate um, experiential learning opportunities such as research projects, internships, or service learning and community engaged learning. Um, many of our programs uh, have an academic theme to them. So, for example, our uh, program, one of our programs in Norway is centered on peace and conflict studies. We also have another program in Norway that is centered on kinesiology. And so, regardless of a student's academic interest, uh, the Wong Center is here to support students with navigating their options finding a program that is going to maximize their personal, professional, and academic goals, um, as well as to ex um, you know, really expand on a student's and maximize their experience while away. So these opportunities afford students with many unique experiences that will benefit them as they continue with their academic experience at PLU and beyond, even after graduation. Uh, the different programs and study away experiences that PLU offers really are unique and distinctive. So we know that our programs are thoughtfully designed and they're well integrated with uh, the PLU uh, academic curriculum. So our programs do not delay a student's um, time to graduation, but rather enhance their overall academic experience and complement uh, what it is that they would be learning um, and the coursework they'd be taking on campus. Uh, many of our programs have an embedded internship or community engaged learning experience. And most students who study away through PLU will do that with a PLU faculty member. So we have great support from PLU's administration and PLU's faculty for this type of experiential education. 
And we know that our programs are interconnected um, and are really thoughtfully designed for students to gain a more holistic understanding of the world and for students to find more meaning and purpose as they pursue their academics um, to underscore the different impacts um, in our world and for students to understand more about human and ecological flourishing through their academic studies um, beyond just the PLU campus. So with that, I do want to share some additional uh, global engagement opportunities that students have access to, um, which are things such as our research grant program or other kinds of postgraduate opportunities that the Wong Center can advise on. Um, so these are various other um, engagement opportunities beyond just a regular traditional study abroad experience. Um, and again, this is what really stands out and makes PLU a leader here. Um, so we have different ways for students to engage and participate in ways that are meaningful for them personally or academically. With all of these different programs and experiences, PLU also offers a lot of support. Um, and so we have different financial resources for students um, and we offer scholarships and other points of access for our students to be able to afford this type of experience as part of their PLU education. Uh, we're really committed to offering global engagement experiences that are affordable and within our students' means. With the January term short-term study away programs, we do charge an out-of-pocket additional cost, um, but we're really mindful to keep those uh, fees as low as possible. For students who are able to incorporate a semester-long study away experience into their four-year plan, uh, we're able to offer Global Scholar Award scholarships to assist with the out-of-pocket costs, um, such as the cost of airfare or um, applying for a passport. So in these ways, we try to make um, the study away experience available and accessible for all students. Um, and finally, I just want to end before we move to our other presenters. Um, to describe our programs as being both challenging and supportive, essential and rewarding. And I hope you'll enjoy hearing from our faculty and students um, to hear more about the specifics of their individual experiences. So at this point, I would like to open up uh, the presentation to Dr. Michael Behrens, who teaches in our biology department to introduce himself and to speak with you more about the course, the courses that he has led. Thank you. Thanks, Megan, and thanks to everyone who's joining us. Um, as, as Megan said, I am a member of the biology department. I've been at POU for, um, this is my 18th year and have um, had the opportunity to participate in both our short-term and long-term programs. Um, initially, my first experience was actually going to Ecuador as a, a faculty course assistant um, with another colleague, um, and then later started teaching my own course, the Tropical Marine Biology in the Bahamas, which I'm actually preparing my students and I um, to leave in a few weeks for, um, and we will do uh, three plus weeks in the Bahamas, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that class and those experiences in a bit. Um, those are both short-term, January-term programs, um, but I also have been involved in our longer-term gateway programs. Um, for a couple of years, I was the program director for two of our programs in um, Norway, um, to the University of Southeast Norway, and more recently, I have shifted to being the program director of our gateway program in Trinidad and Tobago, and I will be teaching um, in that program next January 24, um, so a, a year from this January. Um, and I want to talk about a, a couple things today, sort of the role of the faculty member in interacting with the students and the program and the benefits from my standpoint, 
of Study Away, um, then a little bit about some of the experiences that, that we get to incorporate into these, um, these types of, of courses. Um, so first off, my, my role as a, a faculty leader is, is wearing lots of different hats. Um, and I'm obviously an instructor in a course in many cases, um, especially those, those J-term er, courses. Um, but sometimes in the, the full semester as well. Um, but I'm a lot more than that. Um, it's a mix of that. It's it's a mix of tour guide, um, mentor, um, liaison between the university um, and the students. And so really the faculty members and the students, in my experience on these J-term classes, it, it breaks down those traditional boundaries between professor and student. And you just start working together in a, a really sort of common goal sort of way um, to make the students feel safe yet challenged um, and, and ready to engage in, in everything that's gonna come at them across that time. And, and it really, it's a 24 seven job um, while you're there. And it is one of the single most enjoyable things I get to do um, as a faculty member. And, and I get to know my students in a way that I've never experienced in any other way. And many of those experiences continue for, for years after the students graduate. I, I often tell the story that my last class to the Bahamas was just before the COVID lockdown. Um, and, and, or not just, but um, it was January, 2019. And um, we started a WhatsApp chat um, for that class. And, um, been a couple months since someone has posted into the WhatsApp chat, but it's continued for multiple years after um, the course ended, people updating us where they are in their lives, um, whether or not they've gotten into graduate school or medical school or gotten engaged, um, all of those sorts of things. Um, so it, it really develops relationships in a way that I've never seen anywhere else. Um, the benefits of study abroad, I don't think can be stressed enough. And I hope the students will talk about this um, in a more meaningful way that, than I can. Um, but from the faculty perspective, it is an immense amount of growth. Um, and it's, it's growth um, from a, a personal as well as educational or academic um, standpoint. And it's it's the willingness to sort of put yourself out there and engage in a world that can be scary and different than what you're used to, um, because you see the value of it and you feel supported while you're doing it. And that confidence just carries on into the future. Um, it's the ability to study a, a system, and I'll use that general term because I teach in marine ecology, but it could also be um, language or, or any discipline that you're working in, um, in a different context. So be that a different university or be that in a different culture, a different language, um, where often we are learning about things on campus through textbooks, um, or, or papers or, or lectures at a distance. Um, in the case of study away, you're seeing it firsthand. Um, I can tell my students about the, um, the impact of a non-native species like a lionfish on um, the, the Caribbean and tell them how bad it is, or I can show them. Um, and I can show them why this thing with gnarly spines doesn't get eaten by anything else. Um, and, and you can watch them as they, they hunt native fish species. And so we can we can be there um, and, and read papers about it and then the next day go out and watch it. Um, and so the, the benefits of really experiencing the things you're learning about are um, sort of unmatched, I think, in, in the classroom. Um, and, and I, 
So, I mean, that's that's really a focus on the, the educational component, uh, but I, I don't want to undersell the personal growth side of things. And, and sometimes it's completely unexpected personal growth. I've had students in my biology class who come in um, saying that they tell me they're I'm going to medical school and this is what I what I'm going to do with the rest of my life and they leave my class wanting to be marine biologists um, and they had no idea that it was an, even an option um, or even what it meant until they got to experience it for a month and so that that change can be profound in in lots of different ways. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is sort of what you, makes that learning unique. And I started to hit on that, that sort of seeing um, things that you've only read about or heard about um, if you've, you've learned about them on campus in a classroom. And um, that is actually one of the great things I think about teaching abroad. And I hope the students experience that while learning abroad is I tell my students at the beginning of of my courses that I, I don't know exactly what they're gonna learn, but they're gonna learn a lot. Um, and, and the reason for that is it allows me to teach based on what we are actually observing. And, and often we don't know what that is until we get there. Um, I have things that are planned, but um, working in a natural system, I never exactly know what that's going to be. Um, and um, and so every day we go out and and we see something new, um, and then we we figure out how are we going to explain that? What pattern did we see? How do we explain that scientifically? And then on the other side of things, it allows me a rare opportunity to put that learning in context. So um, what's the history? of this island we're on in the Bahamas, which happens to be the island of San Salvador, um, which if you know your, your history is in theory the island, um, and the archeological evidence supports this, that um, Columbus first landed on um, when um, he ran into the, the Americas. Um, and the island has a plantation, plantation history. Um, and so we are able to drive by and walk through old plantation buildings that um, many of them were slave quarters. And we can talk about the history of the Caribbean. Um, we can talk about the economic situation in the Caribbean right now and, and how the economics of a small island impact people's relationship to the marine environment um, and really see it because you can drive around the island and see like, wow, there is not a lot of agriculture. And you can see that things that come in that you buy at the store come in via barge once, once a week um, and they're produced somewhere else. And so understanding that in, um, in that part of the Bahamas, um, the ocean is really a resource that, that can be fished, but also can bring in tourist dollars. Um, and that might be really different from the experience of our students going to Tobago, um, where there is agriculture on those islands um, and, and, and a lot less tourism, um, at least the, the overall impact of tourism is, is less from a marine standpoint in Tobago. Um, and, and, and that changes the relationship that the, the local people have with the environment. And so, Sometimes I get to talk about those things because the students can see it directly. Other times I'm just informed by my other experiences through study away. And, and, and we can really personalize the, the education to the context um, of the moment. And so that's where study away is just a really unique opportunity. It's also an opportunity to, to learn without a lot of the noise that is in our daily lives. Um, so there's not a lot to do on the island that we're on in the Bahamas. And so we have class pretty much every day. Um, and, and students really are fully engaged in the topic. It's not that they're not having fun on their, in their free time. They're playing Frisbee on the beach and swimming with turtles whenever they want to. Um, 
but they're also learning every day and it is their sole focus while they're there. And that leads to a really powerful ability to um, learn a lot in a short amount of time in a really, really meaningful way. Um, I think I will go ahead and stop there. Um, and we can go ahead and pass on to our, our student global ambassadors. Thank you so much, Dr. Behrens. Um, I hope this has been helpful to hear from a very experienced and a very committed faculty member about the really rich teaching and learning opportunities that our students have both on campus and away. Um, so yes, I would like to now invite uh, the Wong Center's global ambassadors who are current students at PLU who have each studied away um, just to share more about their personal experiences. So I think we'll start with you, Emily. Um, if you can first um, just introduce yourself, um, your name, where you're from, and where you studied away, um, that would be great. We'll start there. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is Emily. I am a fifth year student here at PLU. Uh, my majors are sociology and anthropology with a minor in business, and I studied away um, in two J-term programs, both in Oxford, England. I did once in 2020 and then also in 2021, or sorry, 2022, my bad. Um, but I, when I went both times, I had um, completely different experiences. I took two different classes. Um, so the first time I went, I did a course on how museums make meaning. So I got to go around to museums with my cohort in Wales, Cardiff, London, and also in Oxford. And just kind of like look around the museums, learn about like the history and the artifacts, the culture of everything that is there. And we got to kind of write papers on the similarities and differences that we saw between the museums. So it's a really fun experience. I went with a great group of people. And then the second time I went, I actually did the condensed version of the IHON Oxford program that we offer in the semester where we work one-on-one -on -one with an Oxford scholar. Um, that was a lot. It was the first time that they offered that during day term. And I definitely have to say it was a challenge, but it was very rewarding in the sense that it made me more confident, um, not only in myself, but my ability to read literature in such a short amount of time and write um, a four page paper in a week. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm just honestly so grateful for all the opportunities that I've had to like be able to talk about study away and be a part of study away. It's just overall, I felt like just helped me so much with my personal growth, academic growth, and I've just been able to meet a lot of great people along the way, which has just made the experience even better. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily, for sharing. Um, Zoe, if you would like to um, introduce yourself and share more about um, the study away experiences you've had. For sure. So my name is Zoe. I am a third year student here at PLU. I am a nursing major with a Hispanic studies minor. Um, and last spring, I went and I studied away um, in Granada, Spain. So I went and I did one of our Spanish language immersion programs there. Um, I was there for five months. I took six different classes. They had like their own J term. And then I had like a normal semester load worth of classes all of them in Spanish, um, which was very challenging because I hadn't really touched up on my Spanish in like two years, um, but I loved it. It was amazing for my growth for Spanish. Like it increased through the roof, nothing like language immersion with a host family who doesn't speak English um, to do that to you. Um, but also like uh, Dr. Behrens was saying, my personal growth was absolutely insane. Um, just like being away from people that I know in a completely different culture in a completely different language. Um, you kind of have to just stay really true to yourself. So it was a very, very good experience for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, so to continue the conversation with our students, um, I would like you to share a little bit more, if you don't mind. Um, and either Emily or Zoe can, can begin first. Um, but I'd like to know what specific skills um, did you develop on your study away experience, which you wouldn't have necessarily developed if you had stayed at PLU. Um, Emily mentioned a little bit about developing confidence in your writing abilities and 
Zoe, you mentioned a little bit about your language proficiency, but I'm just wondering if you have anything else to add um, about any interpersonal, intercultural, or professional skills that uh, came out of your study away experience. Um, yeah, I can share. I feel like it was really interesting to like build relationships with my professors because everyone thinks about school so much differently in Spain than they think about school over here. Um, so like for the first few months, we were like, we never get homework. This is so easy. Like I don't have to do anything. And then we realized that it's because everyone has a general expectation that you're studying on your own all the time. Like that is how students have been studying in Spain since like sixth grade. Um, and so come to exam season when we hadn't been preparing the way that all of the other students have been preparing, that was kind of a shock. Um, so I feel like I definitely got a little bit better at like being self-motivated to do work. Um, I also had my program, it had like, they had accepted two new schools and it grew the program from like 25 students to like 50 new students. Um, so I also sort of had to interact with my program directors while they were like very overwhelmed, if that makes sense. And so that was also an interesting dynamic to like work with them, but also feeling like they should be there to support me. And it they were lovely, I, like they did a great job, but it was definitely an interesting dynamic that I had to learn to work with. Um, and then, like I said, my Spanish skills went through the roof. Um, and I, I also learned how to navigate an airport, which I didn't know how to do before. That was really cool, so. Thank you, Zoe. How about for you, Emily? Yeah, I think for me personally, um, along with the confidence of writing and like also the personal growth, I feel like I gained a lot of cultural awareness um, of like the culture over there and also like being able to like bring that back here and learn about the culture over here more too. Um, but because I feel like sometimes it's a common misconception that like England is a lot, it's a lot similar to um, the United States. There's not really any differences, but actually when you're over there and you immerse yourself in the culture and you live there for a long enough time, you do experience some of those differences. Um, just with the way the people present themselves over there where they live, um, just for example, like short phrases that they would say, instead of like saying take out, they say take away over there, which when I first went over there, I was like, I never heard of that before. And I didn't know what they meant at first, but yeah, just certain phrases that they say and um, things like that. You can definitely like see that there is a lot of cultural difference from um, there over here, like in the United States. But I think that was one thing that I was, that was brought to my attention and it was really cool to be able to kind of um, learn about that as well. And also just the way that they do their education system and their schooling um just like the one-on-one -on -one working with the professor writing papers every week it's not like I mean there are classes here at PLU that you can do that in but it's not like the like the, the traditional standard um but yeah and the way that they grade um grade all their students as well and like their work um like a 60 percent or a 60 over there would actually be an A and like more cases over here it would be a D um so just kind of like that it's a little bit interesting and it's hard to like get adjusted to that at first but the more time you spend immersing yourself in the culture, the easier it gets to um, understand. But those are some of the bigger um, differences that I noted, noticed while I was over there. Great, thank you so much. Um, what I love hearing is that each of you um, have really grown in your academic abilities and have really gained a lot of um, motivation and independence and ownership over your your own academic progress um, just by being immersed into a different educational system. Um, so that's definitely something that we hear and that we know students um, benefit from. Um, I was wondering if uh, you could also each share a story or um, something that you found really valuable or rewarding or personally fulfilling. Um, or you can share maybe something that was challenging and what did you learn through that challenge? Um, I can share something challenging. I had a couple instances where just sort of a, like Emily was saying, they ended up being cultural differences that I was like completely not aware of. Um, I got a cold and I had like a thing with my ear. 
And so I went to the doctor and it was like 70 degrees outside. So I had worn a tank top and I went to the doctor and he was like, there's nothing wrong with your ear, which there wasn't. But he also was like, you can't wear tank tops. It's not summertime. It's 70 degrees outside, but you need to wear a coat because it's still winter. And that's why you have a cold and drink more tea. And I, as a nurse, I was like, how can he say that to me? Like, how can he tell me that my cold is because I wore a tank top when it's 75 degrees outside? Um, and it's like that, looking back on it, it was because, you know, medicine, again, is very cultural, but also um, for Spanish people, like the weather and your wardrobe is very oriented, like to the dates and the months of the year and not the temperature that it is outside. Um, and so technically, because it was still, I think it was late February, it was still winter. Um, and so they, like everyone thought it was crazy that I was wearing a tank top. And so that was just a good reminder that, you know, not everything is as absolute as I think it is and doesn't work the way I think it does in my head, so. Yeah, I'll talk more on, I'll talk a little bit more about um, the Oxford tutorial system and like the essays that I had to write. Um, so it was kind of a challenge as I previously had stated for me, um, but by the end of it, it got a little bit easier. But I did an anthropology focused tutorial. It was about um, women in Latin American cities and how in a way they face violence and like how they deal with that and like the changes that they make towards that. Um, but yeah, I worked um, in like a group with my Oxford scholar and we just got to like kind of bounce ideas off each other and we got to talk about um, what we were reading, like what we were writing, and also got to um, present a little bit about our, our ideas um, in our papers as well. But yeah, at first when I had to write my first paper, it was so stressful because <laughs> um, I think I had I was assigned 12 articles in one book that I had to read and it was all for that week and then I had to write a paper by the end of the week and ooh, it was hard. <laughs> it was very hard. Um, but just so you know, like, your professors or scholars that you work with, they're there to help you. And if you ever have like any questions or concerns about anything, they're always willing to um, work one-on-one -on -one with you, help answer anything. And I reached out to um, my Oxford scholar a lot and I was like, how, like help me like, and we kind of like bounced off um, ideas off each other. And that kind of helped me like spark some interest in like the paper I was writing. Um, but yeah, it does, I promise it's, it is challenging at first and it is very hard, but it does get, easier as you go and you learn different strategies that you can apply um, to your work as you go along and it's just overall become a really great experience. Thank you both for sharing some difficulties that you were able to work through and overcome. Um, I think what I appreciate as a global educator is just that each of you sought out resources and uh, asked for support. Um, and I just want to underscore that our students are never alone um, when they're studying away, that there are um, systems and support structures put in place to guide students through their experience where we know there will be moments that are uncomfortable or challenging, um, but that we really believe in our students' ability to navigate um, and then become stronger and, and more capable students as a result. So, a lot of the personal growth um, that students describe as an outcome of study away can really only be developed through these kinds of really unique uh, experiences and learning environments. So I just wanna celebrate um, the achievements of our students and for their bravery and courage uh, for taking on global education as part of their PLU story. Um, finally, before we open it up to questions, um, I was hoping Zoe and Emily, um, if you could comment on maybe what's next for you. Um, and it's okay if you don't know yet, no pressure, but um, maybe to think about uh, what did you learn as a result of your study away experience or what new opportunities are you looking to pursue? Um, as a result of having studied away, or if there are any uh, professional plans on the horizon that might intersect with um, previous experiences. I know each of you are getting ready to take part in your next study away journey uh, coming up, so you're welcome to speak to that as well. 
Um, yeah, I can share first again. I feel like mine is very um, directly tied to my study away. Um, after that language immersion thing, my sort of love for the language was reignited and I'm looking into um, bumping up my Hispanic studies minor to a Hispanic studies major, um, which will be a little complicated because nursing the schedule is so tight, um, but I think I could make it work. And with the help of the Wong Center, I'm thinking about doing a Wong Center research grant so I can go to Oaxaca and do some research for both my nursing capstone and my Spanish capstone, which would be amazing. Um, and also, like I said, there was just like a lot of personal growth that happened that last semester and a lot of um, like re-evaluating of my personal values. Um, and so this J term, I'm going up to Holden Village, um, which is like a little tiny community up um, in the Northern Cascades. So it's in Washington state still, um, but they're teaching a class about vocation, which is who are you? What do you wanna do with your life? Why do you wanna do it? Um, and so I felt like after this last semester, those were some pretty important questions for me. So for the month of January, I'm just gonna go sort of continue my personal reflection journey and go snowshoeing and skiing and drink hot chocolate. So I'm very excited. <laughs> Yeah, for me, um, when I did my anthropology focused tutorial, I actually had a minor in anthropology at that time, and I decided um, I really liked um, learning about anthropology and all that came with it. So after I had did, done that tutorial, I decided to bump my minor up to a major and kind of like, sparked an interest in that. And um, now I almost have a degree in anthropology, so I'm super excited about that. Um, <clears throat> but yes, I am doing a um, J term program again, and I'm going to do the Northern Ireland one. Um, it's a class talking about like public memory and identity and we'll get to, it's a sociology course. So we'll get to interact with some of the people there and share and learn about their experiences, which I'm very excited for, um, which sociology is also one of my majors. So it kind of helps with that as well. Um, but after I graduate, I'm not sure what's next. I really like both of my degrees. So I'm hoping that I can find um, a job that supports both. I'm not sure what that would be yet, um, but yeah, I'm just, happy along for the ride. So I know whatever ends up working out, it'll be great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, it's so neat just to hear the two of you reflect on your time away. Um, and I really have enjoyed hearing about the new academic clarity that you found um, with determining your academic focus um, as a result of having studied away. Um, that by immersing yourself in a new academic structure, a new academic experience, you're better informed about what your own academic interests are. Um, and I think that uh, that can happen with a lot of students. Um, also, I um, am just really pleased to hear that the two of you are looking to continue to engage with new communities, whether that's um, a J-term Holden Village experience right here within Washington State, but you'll certainly be in a new environment, a new cultural setting, and challenging yourself, Zoe, in new ways. Um, or for you, Emily, um, you know, it's uh, wonderful that you're heading off to Northern Ireland, and we wish you safe travels um, coming up here in just a few, uh, a few short weeks. Um, but I hope this has been helpful for our audience to hear more from our students, our faculty, um, about the range of opportunities and experiences that are available. Uh, the Wong Center is absolutely here to support student learning um, within our very complicated world. Uh, we all have so much to learn and so much to gain by interacting with one another and fostering better understanding and peace um, among communities. So um, I'd like to open it up to any questions, if there are any um, from the audience. Um, the questions can be directed toward our students um, or uh, Dr. Behrens as a professor, um, or even myself, um, if there are any questions. We often will hear from students or their families about things such as cost or health and safety, um, or if there's anything that we can um, explain or provide more details on, we'd be more than happy to take those questions. I think there is a chat function, so you're welcome to type in your question into the chat. 
um, and we'll be monitoring that. Um, and so we are ready for that in case there are any questions. And if there are not any questions, or if you're still formulating your question, I will invite all of you to visit the Wong Center's website. Uh, we have some incredible information there about our programs and how to get started with planning for the Study Away experience. Um, additionally, on social media, you can follow us. Um, Hashtag Lutes Away is where you're going to see all kinds of great student stories, videos, and pictures. So that can be really inspiring and motivating. Um, so I think we do have um, our first question here, um, which is asking, on average, how many Study Away uh, programs or semesters um, a student can take and if there is a particular limit to that. Um, so I think I'll start by answering, um, as you've heard from Emily and Zoe, um, both have participated or will be participating in multiple programs. Um, so when it comes to the January term, short term experience, a student can study away each J term if they wish. Um, so there's no limit there and, and we'll often have students do more than one during their time um, at PLU. Um, so for J term, you can study away once, twice, or more. Uh, when it comes to semester, um, typically a student would do one semester study away, um, but there are occasions or limited cases where a student might be able to work it out to do more than one. Uh, the Wong Center's goal really is to make sure every student has the opportunity, um, and so we do prioritize students who have not yet had the opportunity to study away, they would receive priority consideration, but um, there can be situations where a student is able to work it out within their academic plan to study away more than one time, or to do a combination of one semester and multiple short terms. Um, so we're definitely here to support and guide students in making that happen. So great question there. Um, wonderful. Um, I see another question here related to students who are interested in science. Dr. Behrens, I don't know if you can see the question. I can. Um, so the question is, as someone who wants to focus mainly on science and pharmacy um, studies, what locations are typically focused on that? Um, and and the, there's a couple different answers, but um, there are options for both short-term, J-term study away, as well as, um, as full semester of study away. Um, so usually students that go on to pharmacy school um, are either biology or chemistry majors. Um, and so um, J term courses work really well. Um, and, and I get students that actually come to the Bahamas who are chemistry majors, bio minors, um, who, who might want to be looking at something like pharmacy school or even bio majors um, that are doing that. Um, full semester gets a little bit trickier, but it's totally doable. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the sequencing of chemistry courses um, to make sure that you're ready to, um, to take placement exams and, and get um, applications ready. But um, one of the probably best places is that might be Trinidad and Tobago um, because of the great diversity of courses that are offered through the University of West Indies. But I could also see um, Namibia as being a good opportunity um, with lots of science courses as well. Um, but the reality is if you plan things really well early on, um, a lot of other programs come into play as well. Um, and so there are options both for full semester as well as J-term study away. Um, Megan, do you want to take the next one? I sure can, yes. 
Wonderful. Um, so the next question we have is asking about cost and does the cost of a program um, vary based on the location? And yes, it, it definitely does. Uh, we are committed to offering kind of a range of different um, programs and price points to fit with each student's individual um, financial um, abilities. And so in a January term, which is the short term study away um, timeline, we have programs locally right here within the US or even within Washington state, which can be very affordable um, and are, are lower cost programs. Um, and we try to price those as low as possible so that as many students can have access um, to participate. Um, and programs that don't require airfare and that sort of thing would bring the cost down substantially. Um, for programs where there are more aspects included or the airfare um, to travel to that location is higher than you would expect the program fee to cost a bit more, um, but it really can range. In the January term, we often say that the average cost for a J-term study away experience is about 4,500 US dollars. Um, that would include round trip airfare. Um, it would include emergency medical insurance. It would include your lodging, um, all of your academic um, costs, um, as well as excursions, study tours. Um, and in most cases, we try to include the majority of the meals. Um, so it does tend to be a pretty comprehensive package. Um, but again, it can vary depending on what's included. For students who are able to study away for a full semester, the cost to participate is equal to the cost of attendance at PLU. Uh, so if a student is studying um, for a semester at PLU and uh, being charged tuition, um, housing, and meals, it's the same cost for their study away program. Um, for the study away program in the semester, there are some additional out-of-pocket costs such as airfare or the cost of a passport, um, or there may be costs associated with required immunizations required by the country for entry. Um, but again, as I, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we have a Global Scholar Award to assist with um, bringing down those out-of-pocket costs. Um, in addition, for um, the semester programs that PLU operates, um, they're referred to as our gateway programs. We do include a $750 flight credit. Um, so we actually support part of your international round trip um, airfare costs for um, the gateway programs. Um, but with advanced planning, um, the Wong Center Study Away Advisor can meet with students individually to start budgeting and planning um, for the experience so that you have plenty of time to, to know what to expect and how to budget um, your costs. So I hope that was um, helpful and thank you for the question. Um, another question is asking what year uh, do we recommend uh, students study away? Um, and again, that will also depend on the student. Um, in some cases, depending on your academic interest, uh, you may be eligible to study away in your first year. Um, in that case, a student could study away as early as their very first J term. Um, that could be a possibility. I would say um, on average though, most students will fit their study away experience in either sometime during their sophomore or second year or sometime during their junior year. Um, that tends to be the most common time to fit it in. Uh, some students will choose the strategy of taking general education requirements during their study away program, and then reserving the credits they need for their major for back here at PLU on campus. Other students may choose it differently, and they might choose to take a lot of their general education coursework at PLU and then save some of their major courses um, for the time that they are studying away. Um, a lot will just depend on if you're transferring credit to PLU or what your major is, 
what your academic plan is, um, but the Wong Center can support students with finding a suitable time um, and duration and type of program um, in order to meet your academic needs and keep you on track for graduation. Um, I don't know if you have anything else to add, Dr. Barron. I do, only because I, I see this is Kennedy asking the question again. Um, and so I'll give a very pointed answer um, to you, um, but we'll give you an idea of some of the thinking that might go on. Um, and so say a student wants to go to dental school or pharmacy school or medical school and they want to study away. Um, one of the big constraints, as I mentioned earlier, were chemistry courses. And for those programs um, and some others, you have to take through biochemistry, which at PLU means a year of inorganic chemistry, a year of organic chemistry, and then Fall, fall of your third year um, biochem. And so I would recommend if in your case um, or someone who wanted to go to medical school or dental school or pharmacy school or vet school um, that, um, that finding a spring program of your, um, your junior year or a fall program of your senior year is probably going to be the best fit, um, and um, and then it will just be a matter of um, figuring out a location that will let you do maybe a few um, courses towards your major and um, and finish up any remaining general education courses that you might have. Um, and so it's just one of those things where you, you need to talk to your advisor, and and often I recommend early, especially if you have a really constrained program like that. Um, nursing would be exactly the same situation where you just want to think about it early um, and and work out a plan. And 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 once we've got a plan, then it's it's much easier to sort of schedule those those courses moving forward. Thank you so much for the on the spot advising. That's great. I know we have just a couple of minutes left. And I do see another question asking about a typical group size for our study away programs. Um, and so that will depend too. Um, for any program that is offered through uh, the Wong Center and is run by a PLU faculty member, um, a student could expect the group size to be relatively small. Um, so PLU run programs, I would say on average are between 12 and 16 students um, for a J term course. Um, for a semester, there may be anywhere from 10 to, you know, 10 or more, I'll say, um, but they're relatively small. Um, and the Wong Center's commitment is really to provide a lot of personal attention to our students and to, to provide really good quality support. Um, to guide our students through the experience. And so we're really pleased to, to have that individualized attention. Students who uh, participate in partner programs, such as the one Zoe described, um, will be one of many students, potentially. Um, many uh, will hold as up to 50 or more students, um, where PLU students may be just a small part of that cohort. Um, so there's a, a lot of different options. And then finally, we have the model where a student would directly enroll into an international uh, university and be the international student at that university, which would be a very independent experience. Um, and if it's the right fit for the right student, um, that student would have a lot of independence um, and have a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom to, to really um, have their own uh, individual experience during their semester away. So it, it will depend. Um, and then the last question uh, regarding credit transfer is yes, all of the programs um, that we offer, um, any academic experience a student does through the Wong Center would uh, allow the credit to be transferred. Um, and the Wong Center supports that. So we actually assist students with identifying the credits and classes that they'll take prior to going. So they know exactly how the credits will transfer back and what requirements those classes will meet. Uh, so there are no surprises. 
Um, and so, yes, that's all prearranged and worked out ahead of time. Um, but we support students with the credit transfer process. Um, these are such great questions, and I would like to invite um, anyone who's attending today who would like to follow up with us to reach out. Uh, you can email the Wong Center at wong.center at plu.edu, and uh, we'd be happy to direct your question to, to anyone who'd be able to provide you an answer. Um, but otherwise, I do want to thank you for listening in and for participating. Um, I hope the information has been helpful as you consider um, your options and for uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Um, so I think with that, I'll say thank you to uh, Dr. Behrens, to Emily and Zoe for joining me tonight and thank you to all of our guests. Um, and I hope you have a pleasant evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.